Adam Morrison here. When it comes to top-tier contracting, my go-to choice is McGilvery Environmental. They're not just any contractor. They're the best in Spokane and North Idaho. With years of experience, they handle it all. New construction, meticulous repairs, and asphalt overlays. From start to finish, they ensure your project is completed with the highest quality and results. And here's the scoop for this year. McGilvery Environmental has expanded its services to include asphalt paving. That means top-notch commercial parking lots, residential driveways, and road construction. So, ready to kickstart your project? Reach out to Kip at McGilvery Environmental by calling 208-556-6384 for your free estimate. Don't forget to mention my name, Adam from the Perimeter, and experience the difference that McGilvery Environmental brings to the table. Again, that's 208 556 6384 McGilvery Environmental. My number one choice for all my contracting needs. HDG Architecture is proud to be a sponsor of The Perimeter with Adam Morrison. There is another podcast that you all should be listening to, and it's called If Not Now, When. This podcast, which Josh Hassong of HDG Architecture hosts, has a clear mission to ignite positive change within the Spokane community. On the podcast, Josh brings together diverse individuals from city officials, business owners, journalists, influencers, and big thinkers to have meaningful conversations about what we can do to help transform downtown Spokane into an even more vibrant and robust community. By talking to these movers and shakers, the podcast aims to inspire and empower its listeners by actively shaping their city's future. You can find the If Not Now When podcast wherever you are listening to The Perimeter at, or you can find it in the description of this episode. Welcome to The Perimeter, presented by McGilvery Environmental. Um, it's nice to not be doing the season recap, Yeah. right? So I uh, get through the weekend uh, nine straight, which is an incredible number if you really put it in perspective. Since 2015, Gonzaga's made it through the first weekend um, going on to the Sweet 16. Games in Salt Lake were very successful going into um, Salt Lake as a venue. We've played in both the Delta Center and then I think it's called the Huntsman where uh, Utah plays. We were 8-3 and three before this week and obviously now 10-3, and three, so it's been a good um, site for us. Everybody still has PTSD though from the Wichita State. That's where <laughs> Wichita State, and that was the oh, first time we that, beat yeah. there. And we man, we almost lost to Southern. Would have been the first one sixteen, but that's here nor there. We're way past that uh, mm-hmm. that deal. So Salt Lake's been really good to us. Um, interesting two matchups. Obviously, McNeese um, was kind of a sexy pick for the, a lot of the pundits when it first came out. They said we were a week five. They were an interesting twelve. And then moving on to Blue Blood Kansas, we've never played in the NCAA tournament. They've been, I think the number was, we've won 15 straight first round games and they're like at 17 and then they have like a similar uh, Sweet 16 streak or like not in a row, but like, you know, 12 out of 15 or something. You know? Right. Yeah. And the fact that we've never played each other is kind of crazy. That is crazy, yeah. In the NCAA tournament. Mm-hmm. Um, so it was it was a perfect matchup for, um, you know, TV and, and, and stuff like that. It was a great draw. If you were going to tell me before the tournament that we'd get a five, didn't think that. I talked about that last episode. Mm-hmm. Um, and then we'd get a smaller conference team. Usually that happens, but we didn't get like a, um, you know, a Mountain West 12 or something like that. Mm-hmm. Okay. That was, you know, nice. Even though they won 30 games and they were good, it was like, okay. And then we were getting a Kansas team missing their best player, McCuller, and who's literally only playing six guys. Um, it was a really good draw. I'll talk about that in a bit. What were your thoughts on um, just as a fan's perspective? Um, you know, we're going to dive into like the the meat of the games, but just there was no sweat in both second halves. It was kind of nice. Like it, it, it was the first time in a long time I've been calling NCAA games, and we literally didn't sweat at all. It was awesome. I uh, I was actually down in Boise, so I got to watch the games down there, nice. and it. It was, yeah, it would, the first game was very, you know, easy, like it was relaxing, <laughs> like you kind of felt like, I, I kind of was like texting friends, I was like, I don't feel like McNeese is doing their game plan if they, and if this is their game plan, it's just, it's, it's yeah, not working, yeah. mm-hmm. and then the Kansas game was, you know, it was a little bit, I was a little nervous in the first half, yeah. but then the second half was just, our guys just like, 
doubled down how they were performing in the first half, yeah. and Kansas just couldn't keep up. And it was it was fun. It was fun to watch, and it was uh, it was nice to to get out of the get into the Sweet Sixteen again. Like I, I just like at the beginning of the season, or even in the middle of the season, like we were worried about making Getting it to the in. tournament, yeah. and now we've done it nine times in a row. And I'm just like, it just it feels vindic like I feel vindicated yeah. as a fan. Like th this is the Gonzaga we've come to come to expect. And, yeah. Well, yeah. and it's kind of funny that. You know, there is bandwagon fans, and then there's people that jump ship easy, and that's, that's going to be in every sport. I'm not going to sit here and mm -hmm. point the finger. Um, but it's also funny, like, you know, midway through the season, I, probably when we lost to San Diego State, people with NIT, and yeah. this team is terrible. Now, in fairness, we, we didn't have great performances, but our net was still in the right, heading in the right direction. <clears throat> you know, offensively, we were heading in the right direction. Things were starting to turn. Mm -hmm. Um, and so, you know, like you said, vindication is, a, is, is probably the right uh, word for being a fan and then somebody, uh, you know, surrounded, uh, you know, involved with the program that uh, our guys could, um, you know, get this done and obviously continue the streak and, and have yeah. a great chance to play Purdue, which we'll get into in a bit. But let's dive into the McNeese game. Um, so apparently, we, we I don't know if I said it on this but i said it on our broadcast like is it mcneese state or mcneese because it's always been mcneese state but then everybody was just saying mcneese but then mm. if you go on their websites it's mcneese state yeah and you get yelled at by like sid so i was making a joke like because it's always been mcneese state i've always heard mcneese state yeah. anyway um you know a team that won 30 games out of the southland i think mm -hmm. um from louisiana so uh, will wade who um, was at LSU, big time coach. He's kind of, you know, went uh, up the food chain, I guess, and, and as far as being a younger guy and and moving up the ranks and, and big time college basketball got caught with uh, some improprieties and he was like on a wire um, call with the FBI that was tapped. And so he got fired from LSU. Mm -hmm. um, and what, <clears throat> what's kind of crappy about that situation, obviously, you don't want to, uh, you know, clap cheering or cheer on cheering but also like nil's here now so like yeah if you waited a year wouldn't have mattered mm -hmm. <laughs> as funny as that sounds you know what i'm saying like, yeah um so he gets he gets canned at lsu which is a is a big time job i don't know how great of a job it is but it's a big it's an sec job mm -hmm. like a lot of resources especially on the women's side so the men's side have the same thing and obviously it's a, a big time powers uh football school so there's money i mean that's part of it um he gets fired and then goes to McNeese, who's in uh, Louisiana. I don't know where, but obviously close. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's not a big state. Um, and I think the year before they had 11 wins. This year he gets them to 30. So did a fantastic yeah. job, but they had 12 new guys. So um, if you're a college basketball fan and your team is not very good and you hire the right coach, you can get good right away. It's not the old school. It takes us three years give mm -hmm. you a recruiting class. Like You can go get 12 portal guys which he did yeah and you know uh, piece them together and, and ended up having a really good basketball team that was 30 and three at the time we were playing and there's only two other teams at 30 wins purdue and uconn going into the tournament so like i said right when this this came out everybody not everybody but a lot of pundits were picking mcneese because the 12-5 is uh, something i saw was 38 percent of the time it happens at 12-5 and think of, you know obviously st mary's lost you know mm -hmm. it, it happens yeah um and and you usually pick all right who's a bigger name that didn't have a great year i think we had a great year but you get what i'm saying that if you're looking outside in and then who's like a really good smaller conference team and that it kind of fit our our matchup yeah um and mcneese plays you know they played like crazy they had four guys that shot 40 percent they forced 16 turnovers. They were plus 18 and a half on scoring margin. So it was like, oh, this team is really good. And in that first probably 10 minutes, they went to a double team from the bottom side every, uh, bottom side every time Graham, so baseline side. Um, Graham caught it, and he did exactly what you're supposed to do, skip to the open, and we made. I think we were eight or six for our first eight mm. or eight for 10 from three. Yeah. And it was almost like ball game, and it was weird because, you know, the tape, our recent tape is San Francisco twice, 
obviously St. Mary's twice, and San Francisco did the same thing where they doubled early and they get nothing inside, and we towed up and, and blew them out both times doing that, making threes at their place, and we did it in the conference tournament. And McNeese did the exact same thing, and we did the exact same thing. So I'm always <laughs> just curious on why teams – Implore that game plan. Now, devil's advocate looking at our overall numbers, and it's been a theme all year if you've listened to this podcast. Mm. We've talked about three point shooting until it blew in the face. That's all we had talked about in the stupid regular, you know, in the middle of the season. It was so annoying, and I, I hated it always talking about it on the show, but it was, it was part of our deal. Mm-hmm. But I mean, they gave up like wide open, I call them workout shots that so you shoot, you know, as a player when you're working out, and you show everyone shoot 53s, and you're like standing there. Mm-hmm. You know, towed up. You lick your finger, and you get to test the wind. <laughs> right. Type deals. Yeah, and uh, you know, we just kind of jumped on him, and I could just see. You know, obviously, when I'm calling a game, I'm looking at the benches and stuff like that because we got to, you know, it's a radio, so you got to kind of provide more of a picture because people are not watching it. Mm-hmm. Um, and you could just see their staff just like, uh oh, we picked the wrong strategy. Shit. Yeah. I don't know what else we're going to do. Um, you know, Nemhard was fantastic in that first half. Hickman had was three for four in that first half. Um, what was great is Dusty Stromer, first touch, literally his first touch. And it's always hard. I don't know if anybody's played at a high level, even if you haven't. If you come off the bench, like I used to like to maybe go up one or two times down the floor and then like get one touch, but like pass it right away. Mm-hmm. It's not fun when it it comes to you where you have to shoot it. It's mm-hmm. like a skip, and he got a skip, and it was like first touch, and he he twined it obviously. Yeah. Um. So that was cool to see. You know, first touch as a as a zag in the NCAA tournament and all those deals. Um. And we just absolutely dominated him in the first half. We were up was at twenty three, and it was kind of like they just had no answer for us offensively. Um. And then. Us on the defensive end just really took away all their Mm -hmm. actions um, and just played really solid defense. I mentioned there are four guys that had um, shooting 40% from three. We ran them off the line. Our switch packages and and pick and rolls and all that stuff was fantastic. You know, obviously I go to the um, the scouts and stuff like that, and that was talked about, obviously, and our guys – got an a plus on that was like hey you know in some of these actions it's similar like size we just have to be able to switch them the correct way and then graham he's usually the one that they don't like switching his show package in the ball screens was fantastic he switched some of the stuff but um it was great you know it was just a plus and the game was basically over at halftime i know 23 is is doable but i just feel like i just felt like they had no chance and you could see the body language of them coming out of halftime and then going in before halftime, they were like stunned. Yeah, because again, a lot of people hammered that uh, that bet because I think the number I saw <clears throat> of pregame was only six and a half. Oh wow, us as a favorite, which is a it's, uh, yeah, a, it's get, a bigger number, but it's still a yeah the twelve five blah blah blah. Like yep. it, it still was like a, everybody, not everybody again. I don't know why I keep saying it, but a lot of people were liking that McNeese and and just. Mm-hmm saying that we didn't have enough firepower and it just kind of shut everybody up right away and um i mean we cruised in the second half and went 40 for them 38 for us but it didn't matter yeah um and just uh really um dominated the game we held them to nine for 33 27 in the first half one for 10 obviously 10 percent from three um and then we hold them 23 of 69 33 percent five of 22 22 percent um Overall, we go 22 assists, 13 turnovers, probably four of those turnovers. And I hate to do this for when our like backup, backup guys yeah. are in. So some of those numbers get skewed a little bit. Mm-hmm. We dominated them on the glass, plus 12. Shoot 10 for 21 from three, which is obviously fantastic, 47%. And they go 31 to 60, 51% um, for the game. But eight for 11 in that first half. Um, from three and it just really like kind of silenced them and again it wasn't guys taking them off the dribble it was obviously the guys got to make it but the strategy i just was scratching my head man honestly yeah i don't know why teams just i get 
not letting Graham get going. He ended up having a fantastic game. He goes 16 and 10, 6 to 6 from the field. But they literally just doubled from the bottom side, and you, you just pass over the top and you shoot, you skip. Yeah. It's just like so easy. And then if you get like an Anton or Greg on the back side, you tell them to cut. Mm -hmm. So that's hard. So then you always have to dive and take that away, and then you can fill and replace on a skip. It's just like, I don't understand it, man. Um, but thanks for doing it. <laughs> right. like, yeah. Uh, because again, the last tape for us is San Francisco. We did it to them at their place or at Chase Center. And then we play them in the tournament. Remember, they double teamed right away. Don't let Graham and Ben Gregg went off in that second half. Mm -hmm. We just, yeah. but like wide opens. And then we play St. Mary's and they play us one on one and they fanned out to our shooters and we really struggled. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you yep. know what I'm saying? Like, I mean, it, it was just, it was smart. And, um, hmm. now I get to counter that somebody would be like, well, they didn't have the size that like Mitchell Saxon was defender of the year, blah, mm -hmm. blah, blah. But still, I just, I don't know, whatever, but a fantastic first round game. I think it kind of shocked everybody. And like I said, there was no sweat in the second half. We had, um, you know, most of our guys got to play. Joe few got in, uh, June got in. Luka Kranovic, who actually played a good game at seven points, but he got in in the first half, which was cool yeah. because he got in meaningful minutes, not just because we were up. They they liked his defensive uh, matchup against their, you know, their four guys. Like I mentioned, they could shoot threes. They were mostly guards. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so it was cool that uh, <clears throat> guys got in the basketball game. Like I said, Dusty Stromer was fantastic, 10 points. Nolan Hickman was solid with 11 Ryan Nemhard, uh, nine points, or excuse me, not eight points, nine assists. Yeah. Um, I think the number I read was the last four games. He has like 52 assists. Holy shit. Or something like that. That's crazy. Or, yeah. Um, so, yeah, he's absolutely uh, playing tremendously as a point guard. Um, reason why we've been so much uh, so successful the last six, seven years weeks mm -hmm. um and and we saw like when he didn't play good against st mary's we were terrible mm -hmm. so he's been the cog kind of in the wheel that's got this thing rolling again um you know and then <laughs> which is it's a perfect anton game right yeah he goes 13 13 points 13 rebounds and nine assists one off a triple double obviously but it was so quiet um and that's that's been him his whole career. Just like you look down, and you're like, oh my god, he dominated the game. Yeah, I, um, I, that that is was off my radar. I did not even know that he no, he was, was one, he off. one off a uh, triple double. They tried to get him one too. There was one where Braden um, fumbled a pass, and you could see Anton like obviously he's not a selfish kid, but he kind of rolled his eyes like, yeah. man, he could have. It was like a duck in where he got could have got it and laid it up. Um, cause it would, it'd be cool feather. I think there's only the number I saw is like 11 NCA triple doubles. Yeah. It's, it's rare. And there's never, we've obviously never had one in for GU. Um, and so if you can ever get one of those, not that people care about, um, records or whatever, but it's also like, as far as Gonzaga basketball in the last 25 years, there's a, there's not a lot to get, have. <laughs> yeah, the last one was Julian, I think. Had uh, the, uh, he had to have one in the tournament. But yeah. yeah. No, I, no, I think Joel was the last Joel, one. Okay. Um, but anyway, yeah. is to have one in the tournament, like, that'd be pretty special. And it kind of encapsulates. Is that how you say that? Yeah, encapsulates. It encapsulates um, how Anton is, like, does everything good. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Uh, a little bit of everything. So, anyway... Great game against McNeese. It was mm -hmm. fun to have, a, like I said, a no-sweat second half. Got most of the guys in. Can breathe a little bit. Um, the crowd was good for us. Um, it was Dayton and... Who did Dayton come back on? Oh, Nevada before us. Mm. I must say, Dayton's fans travel really well, and they're really loud. Like, really, really loud. <laughs> um also thumbs up if you're a Dayton fan, um, but it's like a blue collar type of crowd, which is not th that it's awesome. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Like they get into it. Um, and so that game before us was, was crazy to kind of watch. I mean, Nevada was up 17 with seven minutes to go, ended up losing, but Dayton just kind of crawled their way back into it. But so my point was the energy was good in the building. Yeah. And so when we took the floor, there were still, uh, yeah, you know what I'm saying? And then they were like, they stayed and watched because... 
you know, whatever, Mm -hmm. even though we're not in their pod, but you know, people paid money. So you go to both games and so they were into it. Mm -hmm. Um, but the reason why I bring that up, I was a little bit scared when you go to these games and people can tell on TV, but when you're there live, even though you might be the higher seed and a better team, if, if the other team starts to make a run, people always turn on you. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. They always root for the underdog. The crowd gets behind them. Mm -hmm. St. Mary's experienced that in our own building. Yep. You know what I'm saying? And and obviously St. Mary's, you know, Gonzaga, St. Mary's, all that Mm -hmm. stuff. But people like you, you, you have to like, it's funny. It's like gladiators or something. Get the crowd on your side. (laughs) You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But like, it's a real thing. Like if they get rolling, they start picking the other team. And I was worried a little bit before that game start. If McNeese was rolling, Dayton was, they were going to be like, get it behind that team. Put that all to rest right away. And it was, it was a sleeper in the second half. But fantastic game. Excited for our guys. Cool to win another first round game. And we stayed and watched that Samford Kansas game ended up being a bonkers game. The Perimeter will be right back after a word from our sponsor. Our family is all over the place sometimes, but ICCU helps us keep up with them. We use card control to turn on Olive's debit card when she needs to pay for activities. And turn it off when she's shopping online. We make sure Forrest is depositing his lawn mowing checks into his college fund. And we definitely make sure to ask Grandma Ivy where all those Zell transfers come from. Phew, that's a lot of keeping up. You ready for a break? Kansas game ended up being a bonkers game. Um, oh yeah, it was. It was bonkers, man. It was like Samford two plays crazy, uh, shooting threes whenever they want. Uh, really good bigs that could step out, like just played crazy in a good way. Like their style, mm-hmm. like just let it rip. Had let, had no fear, nothing. Um, came back from a I think fifteen or something like that to get close, and Kansas just barely beat them um, as well. But that was similar where. In the building, it was like there was a lot of Samford, mm. Dayton, you know, yeah. like, and Kansas was playing a road game. Um, and so they barely get out of there. And I, some of this has something to do with it, I think. But like when you're looking for your opponent and the other guy has to like sweat one out and play extremely hard mm. and they don't play very deep, it was a good thing for us. So going into that next day and day and a half into the next game, it was like, okay, Kansas had a sweater they had to uh you know they only played seven guys which they they only wanted to play six but you know what i yeah. mean like it was it was physically tough um this is a good matchup for us um so i was uh extremely it sounds funny but i rather played kansas than sanford that makes i mean because they were they they like sanford had it was deeper they had bigs that could space us out, and they were going to play with nothing to lose. Yeah. And then, like I said, the crowd was going to be behind them no mm-hmm. matter what. Um, so when Kansas won, it was kind of like, oh, sweet. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And mm-hmm. normally, and and every other year's past, you would not want that. Um, but, yeah, getting into this Kansas GU game, I was just, uh, you know, I was the, – the only matchup that I was concerned about was Graham versus Dick. Dickinson inside um, but there was nothing substitution wise for Dickinson the Adams kid was another fascinating matchup he's kind of like a six seven shorter post but he's extremely physical can jump can't really shoot uh, I can make a 14 footer but not like a three-point stretch so he's a dribble handoff guy if he catches out there so you can help off him but if you help too much he gets free runs towards the rim mm-hmm. um so basically the inside matchup i thought they on paper had a, a slight advantage just because of the size and dickinson and then adams was a different matchup um you know but i thought graham ek you know really um stepped his game up and had a terrific game against uh, Dickinson, who's, if people aren't just to give context, is the kid that played at Michigan last year's. I think he's been an All American or at least an honorable mention All American. Mm-hmm. Um, and then transferred, obviously, through NIL and transfer portal. And, and you know, we kind of laugh at it, but we don't laugh at it, but we scoff at it. But Michigan was like 8 and 24 or something this year. So, like, he doesn't have the portal. He has one of the part of one of the worst senior se- uh, seasons of his life. You know yeah, what I mean? Totally. So sometimes the portal has some value. Mm-hmm. So let's let's 
I got to give fair context to that. But Graham was uh, terrific against him, went 15-9, and nine, um, 7-11, only played 20 minutes, got in foul trouble. Um, but that was the matchup inside. I was like, okay, if we're going to win, Graham least has to neutralize him um, point for point and then defensively make it difficult and then hopefully get him in foul trouble because they literally played – they played seven in that game, but they only wanted to play six. They there was the Brown kid, who if people this is a deep dive for Gonzaga. He played at Santa Clara, I think, last year. But his brother Christian Brown plays for the Nuggets. Was like the good mm. white white player wing on the you know on the wing. Mm-hmm. It's his older brother or younger brother, but he's like a post, like totally different on game, can yeah. dribble. So he played there, but we've seen him at at Santa Clara. So like, that was like the only guy they like to bring off the bench. They brought one other kid, um, just out of necessity. But like, my point is like, they only wanted to play six, like they're, and not even, they were open about it too. Like, yeah, this is what we have. We have a lot of energy injuries with McCuller being out. He was averaging about 18 a game, Mm. kind of a first team, all American type. So him going down and not playing in the tournament was really going to be difficult. So like I mentioned earlier, having this, as the draw, even though it said Kansas, it was like, oh, you know, if you really, you know, followed them, you're like, oh, they're on the downward trend, man. Mm-hmm. Like they were probably going to be a two seed if all these injuries don't happen, and you know how that Big Twelve tournament went out and end of the regular season, and then they got knocked out, I think, in the first round or second round of the tournament, but didn't play most of their guys, and I think they were kind of just like, let's just lose and get them healthy. Mm-hmm. Um, but it was like wow, this is a really good matchup for us, even though we're the lower seed and we're playing like one of the all-time great programs in history. Mm-hmm. Um, and that first half was a really good college basketball game. It ended up being 44-43 uh, or them, um, but both teams were just uh, scoring the ball. You know what I mean? Like there yeah. was uh, made three-pointers on both sides. We ended up shooting 19 to 34, 56%. Uh, three for nine for three, not terrible, not great. Um, and then on the other side, they go 17, 34, obviously 50%, and then 7, 11 from three. And I thought the three pointers that, that they were getting um, were contested. Furphy made a couple, the good uh, Australian kid mm-hmm. that's probably going to be an NBA player eventually, six, 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 uh, six, seven, six, eight, can score it big time, uh, kind of athlete. Didn't play great in the second half, but anyway, like, you know, dangerous matchup. He made a couple, um, but overall, I thought defensively, even though they shoot 50%, like our plan was pretty good. It was just one of those games where guys were making plays. It was fun to watch, you know what I mean? Yeah. Fun to watch, fun to call. Um, being down one um, felt good going into half. They got up six at one point, and then we made a nice little run to get back into it. Um, but I was just really impressed with – how well Ben Gregg did in that first half, especially in the second. We'll talk about that. Anton had another huge game. Um, but uh, Nolan was fantastic as well. Braden was fantastic. It was weird. In that first half, we were doing a roll and replay, like high ball screen, roll and place. What I mean by that is your big rolls, and then you usually have another big on the opposite block, and then he replaces. So it's either you tag and switch, or you bring up a three point shooter. But if it's with Dickinson, they don't want to they don't want to switch on certain matchups. They want to keep them by the basket. Blah blah blah. Yeah, like it's just classic. It's pretty simple basketball. Um, but you do it personnel wise. That's why it makes it difficult if you have three point shooters and then if you have guys that can duck in and get one on one because the the other help side has to come up. It's it's good basketball. Mm-hmm. We literally ran it, I think, eight times in a row and probably scored on six of it. They couldn't figure it out. Remember, Braden got those like wide open yeah. layups. Yeah. It was just funny. I said on the air, I'm like, we're literally running like a play that, you know, like a high school team runs. <laughs> not that, it, and it's, it's like, it happens to us too. I'm not saying like they're you know, dumb or anything. Like sometimes it's just a personnel thing. You're like, oh God, I got a tag. Shoot, I'm going to be late. And mm-hmm. then, you know what I mean? And, it, and then it looks like, man, this is so, so simple. It's like, well, it's just because the personnel. Yeah. Um, but it was nice that we recognized that and then stayed with it. And I thought Nemhard was fantastic. He ended up having 12 assists um, on the game, which is terrific. I got to make a point with him. He goes one for six, obviously mm-hmm. not great. Three or four from the free throw line. He goes five rebounds, five points, but uh, 12 assists. He's played so good from the floor that, like, obviously it's nice when he scores, but it's, like, irrelevant. He's, like, affecting the game so much. Um with his decision-making, how he's getting into the teeth of the defense. 
Um, his pace, you know, he had five turnovers, but I some of these I, I like, hey, man, he's trying to make plays, and some of these are okay turnovers. I know it sounds funny, but, like, mm -hmm. you want your – your quarterback, your main guy to like let it rip. And if you throw a couple picks, it's okay. You know yeah. what I mean? Not to be um, hesitant. And that's the same idea with point guard. Like don't have turn you know, turnovers that lead to run out dunks. But if you have some that, you know, you miss a guy on a duck in and you're trying to thread the needle and it goes out of bounds. But if he catches it, it's a layup. Okay. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> so he has been really fantastic for us. You know, it's the best one for six game I've ever seen, right? I know that sounds funny, but 12 assists is, is harder to do than people think, especially in the college game, how they score, um, how they count assists. It's a little bit different, um, but he was terrific. Like I said, that first half was great, and then we get into the second half, um, and we just absolutely go bonkers from three. Um, we go five for six. I think we made our first five. Um, and just really like expanded the lead and just kind of like punched him in the mouth and <clears throat> started to get up six, eight, and you can just see them get tight. And they were so reliant on throwing into Dickinson and ha having him make plays. And again, I thought Graham did a good job. We played him one-on-one -on -one for the most part. We also had, you know, a couple double team packages, but our rotations were good. And then, then <clears throat> to be honest, it helped that they didn't shoot it well. Furphy went 0 for 4, his first four shots. He had mm -hmm. three really good looks and just missed them. And then they just missed a ton of layups. At one point, they were 4 for um, four for 24. <laughs> um, and, you know, that's when we're starting to get up 12. And then, mm. you know, I mean, 10, you know, just but like in comfort. And there was one Harris, their fifth-year point guard who, who played in that he was on the national championship team in 21 or whenever they won it um hit the bottom of the backboard on the layup <laughs> yeah. you know i mean but they yeah. just, I'm, I'm giving the context not to make fun of them it's just like this is how like out of sorts they were mm -hmm. uh the, the adams kid missed a couple layups dickinson like short arm like they just looked like they were gassed and done and you could see not that they weren't fighting and trying but like all right, season over, guys. It's yeah. been a long year. Mm -hmm. And and Coach uh, Self talked about it after the game that they had one guy, he didn't say who, who there was – those TV timeouts are like three minutes long. I mean, they're so long. Obviously, if you watch the games, if you you know start your timer, you're like, holy crap, I got three minutes. And like calling the game, someone was like, man, this is so long. Anyway, he asked a kid to go back into the game the, during a timeout and the kid said, no, he needed more timeout. And he was like, that's when I knew we're not. Uh, oh, my gosh. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And <clears throat> he didn't say who, and I don't know who it was, but I've never in my entire life, I'm not even kidding. This is not even an exaggeration, like asked to come out or like if a coach said, are you ready to go? Like not gone back in the game. Like mm. I've never in mm. all my years of playing, I swear to God, like yeah. never on the bench would be like, no, I, 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 I need some more time. Like never. Ever, could, ever, ever. Could that like, that could go with like the whole elevation change, right? Yeah, no, like, exactly. Yeah. That's that, that that's something that I mentioned in the previous episode. Um, but it's not the it's being yeah. soft. Yeah, I oh. mean it's, that's what it is. Mm. You're being soft. Um, but, but if a like if a player did that, like, and you're coaching them, you're just gonna not call them. They're just gonna sit the rest of the game, right? I mean, you'll put them in, but it's going. I mean, you're trying to win an NCAA tournament, so you're putting <laughs> right. your best guys in the game, right? But, but you. You'd be like, okay, yeah. You just maybe go right in back. You you wouldn't make a scene. I wouldn't make a scene right there, but it would just go right in the back of my head and be like, sweet, this is the type of crew I got. Mm. That's that's what it. That's what he was saying. Yeah, I'm like this is the crew I got. Cool. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like screaming at a guy, it's not. It doesn't fly. So yeah. you just, but you're just like, all right, this this is how tough you are. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Um, so, um, that second half was some of the best offense we've seen. I think since probably like our Kispert team, you know, where they just were out, everything was flowing. Um, like I said, five for six from downtown. We go, we shoot 66% in the second half. Um, 60 overall from the game, eight of 15 from downtown. So that's 53%, mm. but 35, 58, so 60% for the game. Um, and it was just like, laughable because it was everything was rolling ben Gregg was absolutely terrific six of six 
15 points, nine rebounds, <clears throat> set all the hustle plays. Anton, yeah. another great game, 21 points, six rebounds, eight, eight for 11. <clears throat> Excuse me, it was fantastic. Um, I, I mentioned Ryan Nemhard, best one for six game of all time. You know, it was terrible from the floor. <clears throat> Excuse me, I, I can't get this frog out of my throat. Um, Nolan Hickman was seven of 11, three of four from downtown, 17 points. I mentioned Braden had a great first half, had 11 points. You know, we, we win by 21, but plus five on the glass. That was something that I was concerned about um, at the start of the game. They were only plus two on the glass um, as a crew. What I mean by, you know, plus two on average, but they play in the Big 12. So sometimes you always have to like some of the numbers you have to skew a little bit. You sure. know what I mean? Like who you're playing. So if you're plus two in the Big 12, you're you're pretty good. And, mm-hmm. and size-wise, I mentioned Adams and then Dickinson. And we, kind of, <clears throat> for the most part, neutralized those guys. Um, 19 assists, only 10 turnovers. They had 20 assists, only eight turnovers. But uh, uh, that was mostly the first half. And I mentioned how clean and fun the game was to call. Um, but our guys just absolutely, like, just shot the shit out of it in the, in the second half. And it was simple as that. Like... Obviously, our scheme and plan was good, but like I've said it all year, like it's a make or miss league. It's an NBA turn. It's the same thing in college basketball. Mm. It's the same thing in high level high school basketball. Like you draw up the actions, you can get your guys or girls usually good to great shots. And if they make them, you look like a genius. If they miss them, what's wrong? You guys suck. Mm. I mean, that's yeah. happens to a lot of coaches that are great coaches that, and they just don't get those type of crews. And you never, you'll never know how great they could be. Um, but really happy for our guys. You could see the smiles um, <clears throat> that just, you know, game was over within the first five, seven minutes of that second half. Yeah. And it was, again, another a no-sweat deal. And so I was like, well, we're going to the Sweet 16 again. You know what I mean? Like, go ahead and book your tickets to Detroit and uh, get ready to play. And um, took the crowd right out of it again. Um, they had a decent following. But like I said, it – Arizona played before us, and I had a. Uh, I I would have guessed that because Arizona played Dayton, um, that Dayton would have the Dayton fans would have jumped on, but some of them got shooed out because um, it was different sessions. Mm. But um, yeah, it was it was just cool to have two games. It was like usually when we have that, we're the number one seed, and we we yeah. coast through the first week. I was like, this is actually like. Uh, one of the first weekends where we didn't have a sweat in the second half. Well, hey, it was crazy. Um, and But to go to what we talked about earlier, like nobody would have picked this team to do this, so that's why it's it's funny on the backside. Mm-hmm. So hats off to our guys. They were terrific all game, um, especially that second half. Um, you know, some all-time performances, like I mentioned. Anton was great. Graham was great. Ben Gray goes perfect from the field, 15 and nine, three assists, no turnovers, two blocks. I mean, he just did everything, was really hustling. Um, actually saw his parents the night before and had a beer with his dad. His parents are really nice people, good people. Um, dad, dad was a coach in uh, Coach Girls Women's down in Portland, not Portland, like college. In that like, area. In that yeah. area. Yeah, um, yeah. No, um, he's, he's, he's a nice guy, and um, they know the game and stuff like that, and that's cool when – Parents follow the game, and, and then their son, you know, son or daughter plays well. So mm-hmm. it was cool. Um, but anyway, um, I was going to say we got to give Ryan Nimhard some love. He broke the single season record yeah. for assists at two hundred and thirty five, um, beating it, Josh Perkins. Did you, uh, beat the single season record, and then he beat the single game record, uh, which was eleven oh. in the tournament. That was uh, his brothers. Oh wow! So it was like what That's a special awesome. day. Like you go to the Sweet Sixteen. Mm-hmm. Um, you get 12 assists, you break that record, then you break Perk's record, and you're going to continue and expand on it. Um, so, yeah, he's been terrific the last two months. Yeah. I mean, he didn't have a great start to the season. He'd probably say the same thing. It was out of sorts, and then he really, like, refocused his game, and it was um, downhill and actually talked to his dad after the game for a quick second, and it was, um, you know, his dad was saying the same, same basically the same thing. Like, he's – Really controlling the offense, man. Yeah, you know no, what I mean? Really like, is. and I said, I said it to his dad. I was like, "That's the best one for six game you've ever seen, right?" Mm. He, started, he kind of chuckled, but he. I mean, I know his dad knows the game. Yeah, I'm like, he's controlling everything that they're doing out there. Um, and when he scores, which he will, 
Um, and you add that to it, he's like, it's really tough to stop. But i um, happy for all our guys, man. And then you get into the nine straight Sweet 16s. I don't think people realize how hard it is to be able to accomplish that. Um, there's so many blue blood co- programs that have had, quote unquote, better players uh, earlier. And then, you know, more resources, all that stuff that haven't done that. Um, whenever you get into an argument with other college basketball fans and they say we don't win in March, uh, tell them they're idiots. I mean, seriously, <laughs> seriously. You, like, you, you, end the, you end the conversation. Yeah. Um, it's just like you don't know what – you literally don't know what you're talking about. Um, and so – You don't win – you don't go to nine six, yeah, sweet 16, 16, 16 by accident. By, exactly. <laughs> and then if you ever get the – the WCC doesn't prepare you for March. That's horseshit too. Yeah. We've been to two Final Fours. I don't know how many Elite Eights in this, and then nine straight Sweet Sixteen. So mm-hmm. I don't know what the fuck anybody's talking about. Excuse my language, <laughs> but it's gotten to that point where you have to say it like that. Like I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah. Um. <clears throat> so yeah, it was it was fun to call those games. Uh, like I said, it was cool to watch the smiles on the kids' faces, and it's fun watching a team gel at the right time and mm. and you know, pep in their step, all that stuff is cool. Um, so I was uh, really excited for them. Um, you know, and then we got to come home and watch uh, who I presumed and was exa- absolutely right. And I'm not even saying, like, I didn't think Utah State had a prayer against Purdue. I think Purdue is on a mission um, to, you know, they got bounced in the first round last year. They had Zach Eady still have them. But, I, you know, just a, one of those losses that you'll never forget and get over. Um, and I think they were like, nobody's going to stand in our way this first, these first two rounds, obviously yep. like we're not, we're not messing around here. And they, would they beat Utah state by, by 40 or something like that? I mean, something uh, stupid. 39. Yeah. I mean, um, just absolutely waxed them. They had no prayer watched probably a half, you know, almost three quarters of that game and then changed it um <laughs> like, yeah what am i doing you know yeah. you're kind of wasting your time and there's other games coming on and stuff like that third time we were going to play these guys in two years the perimeter will be right back after a word from our sponsor hey hunter green did you know that card control from iccu lets you turn off your cards with just the tap of a button off on trying to pay off. our bills on third time we were going to play these guys in two years mm-hmm. obviously the first time we played him the pk 82 years ago got absolutely boat raced with uh timmy's crew and, and julian um we never played ed so i i mentioned this in previous episodes that it's tough when you don't play somebody at that size kind of how to have the game plan and then once you see him the second time you usually have a better game plan so going into Maui, it was in Honolulu, but Maui this year, um, we played them the first game or the second game? First game. First game, yeah. And uh, let's see, we have the box score, so I appreciate um, you getting that for me. But we were up five at halftime, mm-hmm. and then we had the famous 0 for 16 from three. Yep. So we were six for 16, and then we went 0 for 16 in the second half. Um, six for 32 overall. Ended up losing by 10. Um, if we look back, Edie went eight for 16 at 25 points, 14 rebounds right on his average. I think he's at this year, he's at 24 and a half, 12. So we held him to basically his averages. Yep. Um, he shoot, goes to the line, shoots 10 free throws. That'll be interesting coming up. Yeah. Um, we hold them to 10 for 27 in the first half, one for six, but then they shoot 54% in the second half. I just remember uh, that game was interesting because I, I thought Graham did a pretty good job on him. And then we played him one on one and we did fan out or we fanned out to their shooters. I think uh, strategi- uh, strategy wise, we'll mix it up. I think you kind of have to, but you can't allow their guards. Um, What's the little kid, the Braden Smith kid, Mm. and then the lawyer kid, and then Lance Jones, who's a a transfer, who's a good scorer. That you know, Smith averages twelve and a half, uh, Jones twelve, and then lawyer ten and a half. You can't allow them to get towed up threes, like Mm -hmm. I just mentioned that teams are doing to us, and how great we look. Um, So I think sometimes you have to kind of live with what Edie gives you. You just don't hope he doesn't score forty, but if he scores twenty five and twelve. Good job. You're the player of the year for a reason. He's really good. Yeah. 
he's hard to stop, but I think you kind of have to live with it. Um, it also matters what kind of whistle you get against him. Um, that'll be curious to see. So when the people that are listening to this, um, going in, watch early, how much contact we're allowed to put on him, um, early when he's posting up and then when he's, you know, putting it on the floor, you know, around the basket <clears throat> that matters. There's, there was issues. I think about a month ago, people were talking about how he's, um, in that league, we're saying that he's ref unfair and mm. it was hard to stop because he gets all the calls and, I mean, when you're a player of the year, you you earn that, <clears throat> and then you're at that size. I think sometimes, and this is me uh, as a, a casual take because obviously I didn't dive into the Big Ten, um, but just because somebody's that big doesn't mean you can, like, fouling doesn't hurt or doesn't move them off his line or it's not illegal. It's like the old Shaq deal. Like, remember... People just like Shaq. Why does he get so mad? Remember, there's uh, when he was at the Lakers, and a couple times, especially in Orlando, he'd like punch, he'd like almost punch guys. Mm -hmm. You're like, w why? It's like, dude, he's getting elbowed in the back and then hit on the head. I don't care if he's seven six, still hurts. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, it still hurts. Mm. There's another grown man doing that to him. It hurts. Um, I think that's some of what happens with Edie. Is he's so big that so if people think that they can, or they try to play illegally using their hands or their hips in the post and it's still a foul. Mm. Um, but also like, I, I mean, I got a great whistle my last year and teams used to complain about it, kind of earned it, mm -hmm. but I, you know, Fiwi and the staff, and then I, I would be like, he's holding me, you know what I mean? Like, cause but you're the main focus. So yeah. you, you usually get uh, a better whistle. So I think it's a combination of that. Um, I think we obviously cannot allow their guards to play well. If we look back at this, First game of the season, Fletcher Lawyer um, was 0 for 6, only had two points, the off guard wing. Um, but I remember Braden Smith, their little point guard who's good, was fantastic. He was 6 for, six for 8, 13 points, uh, 6 assists, 4 rebounds. And then Lance Jones had 13 on 14 shots, but I remember he was a tough matchup and he's good. I think he led the uh, scoring at, you know, like some Missouri Valley or something. So he's a good player. Mm -hmm. Um, so we're gonna have to neutralize them on the glass. Um, we were even on the with them on the glass in Maui, um, and then to be honest, like I think this is a, a good matchup personnel wise. Our guards are like size. We have uh, you know an Anton and a Ben Gregg that I don't think they really have. Um, obviously, we don't have a Zach Eady, but I think Graham Ek show that playing against Dickinson is a, a yeah, like size guy. Totally did well. Um, he's, he has to stay out of foul trouble. Graham does. I mean, it's paramount. Like yeah. don't even get two in the first half, but that's easier said than done. Cause you're going to be arm wrestling with, um, Edie in the post, but he's got to play uh, good. And then if you eliminate O for 16 stretch, I think we match up well with this team. Now Purdue is going to be the favorite, rightfully so number one seed. Mm -hmm. Um, but I think playing a team the third time makes everybody's it's hard to beat a team three times. Yep. I know we haven't, let's be a second time this season, but third time um, recently. Um, you couldn't ask for a better uh, chance to schematically know what a team does by having this familiarity is what I'm trying to get at. 100%. Still, yeah. still a hard matchup. Still great. Um, still Purdue. Uh, team on a mission, all that's uh, all that stuff. Player of the year, Zach Edia, which I think he'll win two in a row, which is uncharted territory. And like some of the graphics that are coming up, like sixty points and thirty rebounds. It's like Bill Walton, Lou Alcindor. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. So he's having a good tournament, obviously. Um, but uh, I think, like I said, knowing this team, it's going to give us a, a chance to to do things that maybe uh, set them off course to get them disorganized a little bit. So I'm really looking forward to the matchup. Can't get our ass kicked on the glass. Can't happen. we got to take away uh, some of those kids out on the perimeter. Um, and then obviously Edie's a problem, but in my opinion, you got to take away the, the supporting staff because I think he's a type of kid. That doesn't mean you don't try, but that he's going to get his numbers regardless. Mm -hmm. So if you can take away the supporting staff and be really solid on that, you have a chance to win. Um, so I think it's, it's a fun matchup. <clears throat> it's a, we have nothing to lose matchup pressure on them, which is great. Um, and I think it's kind of all gravy for us from here. If 
we win. What's the what's the other one? It's Creighton and who else? Tennessee. Tennessee. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think those are winnable games as, as well, but uh, I don't even want to talk about those because I don't – the hypothetical is so great. Yeah, it it's really so is. so grand. You yeah, know what I mean? Like, like Creighton – would be a fun one with the Nem Hard transferring there. Mm. That's a, you know, a fascinating matchup. Totally, yeah. Um, I think they're solid with their, their big seven footers, skilled as well. They have great lefty shooter, and then their guard play is good this year. They're tough. They're tough as all get out. Yeah. And then Tennessee, I think, would be a fun like open game. Uh, we played them a couple of years ago, I think, and and beat them. I think. Yeah. No. They they beat us in a close scrimmage or something like that. That's right. Yeah. yeah. And then I think we played them recently. Was uh, that the other Air Force? Was that the other Air Force game that we went over to <sighs> over to? Like how, in yeah, Japan, I can't remember. Yeah. Um, but we've played that style. We know Brick Barn, and I think not that they're not tough, but I think that's a good matchup for us mm -hmm. personnel wise. Yeah. Um, but again, we're gonna have to play really good at, to beat Purdue. But I think all the pressures on them. Yeah. Zach Eadie's last year, uh, what they had last year, uh, the, the early round exit, the first one sixteen or the second one sixteen to ever happen, but it happened two years in a row or two out of three. Two out of three, yeah. Um. And so I think the pressure's, you know, on them, but they're going to have more fans. It's in Detroit. Mm -hmm. um, and, yeah, but also, like like I said, it, it, it's an advantage that we've seen them already, and we can go, okay, this is what worked, this is what hasn't. And, you know, if we don't go 0 for 16 from 3 in the first game, it's it's probably a closer game, and it ended up being only 10. Right, I remember yeah. they made free throws down the stretch. We were in that game the whole time. We were, yeah. I remember after that game, you know, everybody that was kind of like, yeah, if we make shots, we're we'd probably win. Mm -hmm. So like it, it like, but the point is like, oh, okay, because the year before we got absolutely boat raced by them, but it was like, oh, okay, we can we can compete with this team. We're mm -hmm. fine. You know what I mean? Like, okay, so really looking forward to it. Obviously, congrats to our guys for making the second uh, Sweet Sixteen. Or excuse me, winning two games, getting a nine straight uh, Sweet Sixteens, yeah. and uh, you know just playing, playing like nothing to lose right now, and it's fun to watch, fun to call, it's funny to, you know, I hate the word hater because sometimes I think it's overused in today's society. If anybody criticizes you, you're a hater, it's like no, but I think some of the um, early detractors that were like we're dead. It's like, oh, we're not dead, man. We're yeah. going back to another Sweet 16. You know what I'm saying? It's just like, it's funny. I it, just laugh. I laugh too. It's like, yeah. it, it is. And I think, it's, I mean, I'm, I'm excited for the future of this team. I yeah. I don't know what's going to come from this. Like, I think they have a shot to get out of this, uh, out of the Midwest bracket. 100%. And to get through Purdue, yeah. um, it'd be cool to be looking at a, a, final, a final Four. four. Um, that would be the ultimate you know, middle finger, ha ha. <laughs> right. Everybody screenshot, like go back and screenshot who yeah. said blah, blah, blah. And, and, uh, you know, all that stuff, but we don't want to get too far nah, ahead of no, ourselves. No, not but, at all. Um, I think it's kind of cool to be back to also like the underdog zag mm -hmm. deal. You know what I'm saying? We're yeah. just like, sweet. We have nothing to like, like I said, the first round, everybody's picking McNeese. Mm -hmm. And now it's like, we have nothing to lose, and I think that team's uh, this team's playing like that. Mm -hmm. and it's fun to watch, like where they're just wide open three, whack, you know. And yeah. Then they start doing their all their hand signals and stuff, and get rolling. And <clears throat> Ben Gregg does his deal, and he's you know what I mean. Like it's just fun, and he gets everybody going. So I, I I'm really having a a fun time watching this team evolve and and get to a point where they're you know playing this hard and playing this together and connected and the balls just ping you know what i mean the balls not sticky <clears throat> all those things it's fantastic so yeah looking forward to going to detroit i haven't been to detroit in a long time um i'm sure it's nice i mean yeah detroit is detroit and there's uh nice pockets there and um it's the midwest midwest is fine like i'm, I'm not a big like crap on a city for no yeah. reason like it's detroit it's fine it's a all-american city it's been I'm just the only time I get complain is when it's cold. <laughs> right. That's when I have an issue. But other than that, it's like, oh, so I mean, anyway. Actually, there's only one city I wouldn't like. I don't like going to New York. I just 
I'm just not a fan. Yeah. I, I can go into a whole deal. <clears throat> you need five hundred dollars to walk out the door in New York. That's, that's very you li- true. You literally do. If you <laughs> yeah. want to go do anything, you need five hundred bucks. And then I'm not even kidding. Like if you want to go to dinner, show, parking, whatever, you need five hundred dollars. Mm. That's the minimum. Yeah. Like just to like, and it's, it gets annoying. Um, anyway. Yeah, uh, thank you to our sponsors. Do um, you got anything else? Is there anything else? Uh, no, I mean, I th- I think that's yeah. I just yeah, I don't want to get ahead of ourselves. It's just it's it's exciting to be here, and I yeah, I, I'm, I'll I'll save Let's, it all for. I, I think I think this team is special, and yeah. it just it they have proved the the pundits wrong all season, yep. and I I just think. That's why I think when you say like they have nothing to nothing to lose, they, nothing they really lose. don't. They, they don't. They don't. It's so, awesome, um, and it's old school Zags yeah, feeling. You know what I mean? Totally. Where you're just like you know, especially the Kansas game. You're playing like a high. Obviously, we've moved into a blue bud, but if you think old school, it's like when we played Stanford. You know, these clubs are like who's mm. Gonzaga? That's yeah. that, that feeling. It's like oh. Whack, 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 five threes. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like, oh, we're up 17. Oh, my God. Yeah. In a blink of an eye. And then the game's over. Totally. All those things. So, was I, the one thing I was going to ask about Ben Gregg is he's fine, right? Like, he kind of yeah, so got banged I, up a yeah, little bit. Yeah. I think he had uh, something. His parents said something with his uh, knee or something like that, but he's playing through it. I don't think it's anything serious, but it's yeah. something that, um, but he, he's a tough kid and he'll probably tape it up, but I don't think it's, serious i haven't heard anything mm-hmm. and honestly like if it was major it probably would have came out um yeah but obviously on the flip side of that if i'm being completely honest if i knew something and i'm not joking i would i would keep it in my back pocket right. unless, I, unless i was told i could t- i could say it. not that i get censored but i don't you know i'm one of those guys like i'm part of the program yeah for sure you know what i'm saying so i think he's fine and that's the honest truth i think it's just a end of the year soreness mm-hmm. um give me some advil let's go yeah, totally you know what i'm saying tape it up or whatever you got to do but mm-hmm. I, th- I don't think it's anything structural and knock yeah. on wood or anything to prevent him from playing um because he was terrific that's six for six in the last game was really got us going yeah I, I we interviewed him right after the game and he got shoot out he missed a box out on furphy early and then he remember he got he shot the free throw and then he got backdoor lob for a dunk mm-hmm. um and i was like so what was it like getting chewed out by Fuey to get you going? And he was just like chuckled because he didn't think I was going to ask him that. But I was like, then you go six for six and I had one of the best games of your career and like a, you know, a classic zag game. If you look back, I'm like, oh, totally. that's a like cool tournament moment. You went six for six and he just chuckled. He's like, yeah, that, I can't let those things happen. I was like, that, that gets you going? He's like, yeah, it did. I'm like, cool. So cool. I hope what happens next game, yeah. you know, like. <laughs> Get back door layups and then dunked on, and then you'll get pissed off and play good. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, thanks to our sponsors, uh, McGilvery Environmental, Idaho Central Credit Union, and HDG Architecture. Hopefully, we're coming back next week with, uh, hey, we're going to the Final Four. Hopefully, yeah. Um, but if not, we'll have another episode of a, either recap or whatever. Um, thanks for listening. Yeah.